Um, so, uh, I mean, one of the things that we like to say about co-housing is that what, what, we're, what we're trying to do, when you come together as a group, um, you're trying to design a scheme and plan for the way that you want to live. Um, it's a very unique opportunity for people to be able to do that, because um, usually you're only thinking about your own individual home. But when you come together with a group of people, you have much more scope for thinking about how you want to live as a kind of small community. Um, and as we're finding at the moment, um, uh, the, the benefits of living in community are very great. So we think that co-housing has something to offer, or will have something to offer the world when we get over COVID-19, if we ever do. Um, so a little bit of pretext, context. Um, uh, the picture here on the left is a scheme that's nearby that some of you may know. Um, it's very close to Clissell Park. It's a very small scheme. It's only eight, eight homes um, at Copper Lane. It's a tiny little backland site and it had to be very, very carefully designed, um, both for the people who are going to live on the site, but also all the neighbours who live around the outside because they were all very concerned about privacy and the views and everything. So every window is carefully angled to avoid that. Um, but you can see there a bit, you, often you get um, the co-housing homes grouped around some kind of public space where you can all meet together. Um, what's going on at the moment? There are something like 60 groups um, uh, in the development stage. That's a, a number that kind of comes and goes. Um, groups find it very difficult. Um, they have a bit of a lull, but we think there are about 60. Um, 24 of those, uh, or 24, are already complete. Um, so when we call established schemes, that's people are living there and getting on with their lives. We've got three new groups starting this year. Um, there are particularly co um, elderly um, uh, co-housing groups. Um, and then some things here is that there is lots of public interest um, about co-housing, um, media interest, uh, individuals' interest if they're looking for a new home, searching on Zoopla, um, and we get quite a lot of hits on our website every month. Um, this is probably the best known co-housing scheme. It's finished a couple of years ago. Um, uh, Ouch stand for older women's co-housing scheme um, and it's also quite appropriate to describe the kind of the, the nature of the group they had to be kind of quite spiky and assertive to get their scheme done um, and it took them a long time 18 years and it's one of the things that people feel slightly nervous about co-housing that it can take a long time but if you think back 20 years when they first started now um, uh, nobody really knew what co-housing was, so they were genuine pioneers. Um, they were getting all sorts of people who they needed to get to help them do it. Um, converted to the idea of co-housing, that clearly took a long time. Um, and they encountered the problem that every co-housing group will have, is where do you find the money to do the scheme? And in this particular case, they chose to work with a very large housing association who specialise in homes for older people. And they effectively acted as, what, as what's called a turnkey developer. So they, they kind of act as the bank um, and do the development. Um, and so the individuals uh, in the scheme, they purchase their homes at the end. They put little bits of money in um, before that um, to you know, pay for some of their legal costs and things of that kind. But essentially, you pay for your home at the end. Uh, this is a mixed tenure scheme, so it's got homes for uh, people buying their home um, on long leases, and then there are also social rent flats, affordable housing, um, for people who would normally uh, rent from the local authority or a housing. Um, you have to be over 55 to live there. You have to be a woman. Um, uh, uh, some, uh, most of them live on their own, but there are there hang one couple there. Um, the thing that is, I think, distinctive about this is that um, they have they kind of pioneered the system of a, a large group of people being the client for a new build scheme. You can see there a picture of them working with their architect. Um, so they're all involved in this process of co-design. Um, and not every architect can do this. Um, this particular firm are very experienced and good at it. Um, 
And so that process of designing something together is itself a very important activity for bringing a group together, helping people express the values that they want to see in the scheme. Um, and it's a way of kind of creating a bond between everybody. There are some pictures there of uh, mostly lovely gardens, um, which have matured very quickly in the two years. Um, and then in the center bottom, uh, a feature of life there is there are quite a lot of meetings. Um, and that's one of the facts of life in the co-housing project. It's done very well. It's won loads of awards. This is the Housing Men Awards. It's probably the most prestigious um, one in the country. It was actually set up in 1948 um, by the Attlee government um, as a way of encouraging um, high quality design in post-war reconstruction. It's still going. Um, and so to be the overall winner of the Housing Design Awards as they are in 2017 is quite an achievement. Uh, this is another scheme uh, finished much more recently and took a lot less time. Um, this is on the outskirts of Cambridge, uh, Marmalade Lane. Um, it's in a quite normal um, uh, extension of the city, um, a lot of developer housing going on here. Um, but the city council in Cambridge owned this site and they had decided, long story about why they decided, um, to promote a, a co-housing project. Um, uh, I was involved in this particular one and helped recruit the group um, and help them become a client and then work with the council and then a developer, uh, this time not a housing association, um, a developer called Town, um, whose name is at right angles to the screen. Um, and they were funded by a Swedish um, timber home manufacturer. Um, and again, they acted as the developer and people bought their homes at the end of it. Um, what you can see there is the computer graphic of the um, little street, very strong focus on having a street that people could meet and children could play um, with no cars. And you can just see on the little plan there in the centre of the picture, um, see the street at the top running left to right um, uh, with very, very small gardens, almost no gardens for some people, um, and a rather beautiful green space that everybody can use. Um, uh, there's the computer graphic on the left. Um, and people often say that artist impressions are to kind of dole up the, what it's really going to be like. Well, it's what it's really like is there on the right. Um, and they look remarkably similar. In fact, lots of people, when they see the picture on the right, think that is a computer graphic. Um, the, and then just um, a little bit about what's going on in mainland Europe. There are loads, there are many, many more co-housing projects on the go. And I'll show some pictures of a few more in a moment. Um, this was one that was particularly influential um, at a time when in the UK, um, the government and local authorities were thinking about more imaginative ways of housing older people. Um, and so this thing called HAPPY, housing our aging population, panel for innovation, um, uh, went, went around Europe visiting uh, schemes. And this is a rather wonderful scheme. The group of older women again, um, found an abandoned uh, factory building um, in the city center of St. Gallen, uh, and together with an architect, and they converted it into a rather beautiful scheme. Um, some rather lovely um, terraces and hanging gardens, and there's a tree in the middle, um, and rather kind of cool um, uh, kitchen on the right there. Um, and the word that was called there, um, Solanciem, is a, a rather lovely word. It's a mixture of um, two French words. So Anciem means together and Solo means alone. And that in a sense is the kind of the spirit of co-housing, uh, alone and together at the same time. So that's my kind of first little bit. Um, uh, just to kind of give you an example of some of the things that are happening.